Okay. Well, I just got home from work and my panel fell down. I thought maybe my bungee cords, you know, lifted, but nope. Looks like the rings came right out of here. Both of them. So the hooks are still up there and they still have the little metal rings that were in here. And the whole panel just fell down. Where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> I had a couple extra bungee cords lying around. So I just strapped them onto the next rings down, I guess, from the top ones that ripped out. Hooked them on the hooks up there. Just holding it together with this one on the back. So it's leaning against there. Then I just redid this one on the bottom with a tent peg. And we're back in action, baby. Temporary, though. That is temporary. Um, Obviously these things aren't meant to be out 24-7 and this has been since like the winter so I guess it only makes sense that stuff like this starts happening, right? Hundred and sixty-eight, hundred and sixty-nine. I did just see 175 watts coming in. Not a bad solar day. Full sun on the panel here. Full sun on that panel up there too. Still need to get a pole saw and cut that big limb up there. Um, hopefully soon. Good afternoon. Um, today, I think what I'm actually going to do, kind of been a long time coming. I'm going to get rid of that, not get rid of that portable panel that's out there, but I'm going to remove it and make it a portable panel once again. It's not, they're not meant to be sitting out in the elements 24-7 in snow, rain, whatever. They're not meant to be outside all the time. I don't think they're kind of more like when you need to recharge your power station, take out your folding panels. Yeah, as a result, we get broken. Anyway, it's time. It's time to take this thing down. And another reason is that uh, it's a tripping hazard too sometimes. I've tripped on it a couple times when I kind of forget it's there, but so instead, because this 400 watt panel is no longer being used really at the moment, uh, I think I'm actually going to hook that up to the power station. Having said that, the power station has a max solar input of 220 watts. I know that one up there is 400, but that doesn't matter. That's okay as long as the voltage is within what the power station can handle, and it is. Because I checked that all out and I had it hooked up to the power station before uh, previously as well. So even though that's a 400 watt panel up there, uh, it will probably only bring in a maximum of like 219 watts, I think, when I tested it out before that's what it was doing. But right now this panel, uh, the temporary portable panel, brings in at best like 175, 180 right now. We'll just, we'll test it out and see what it does when I hook up that one to this. It's a matter of moving some wires over, so let's get at it. So if you remember, the 400 watt panel um, was hooked up to my gel batteries in here. And recently, when I removed my diesel heater that was over here, I unhooked the diesel heater from the batteries in here. Uh, that was literally the only thing that was hooked up to these batteries. Anyway, disconnected the solar charge controller and everything that was hooked up in here. Just kind of figured there wasn't much point to have that panel hooked up to those batteries when those batteries aren't connected to anything. Um, right now I have a total of like six spare gel batteries and I don't need that many. So what I think I'm going to do is donate a few of them to um, my family camp. It's totally off grid so having extra batteries there probably would be a good thing. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I do like having a couple around so that I can use one at least for my transfer pump, my water transfer pump, and having an extra around in case the one on the generator goes out on me. It's always good to have spares. There's just no need for like six spares, I don't think. This project today is going to involve me getting up on the roof, which uh, is always a little nerve-wracking, but let's just do it anyway. It's not raining. The roof might be hot though, it is, uh, the sun's sitting on it quite well. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember, but I ordered these extension EcoFlow cables that run from um, the fridge vent down, the fridge vent down to the power station inside here. 
So what I'm actually going to do is disconnect them. I'm going to pull these wires up back over the roof onto that side. And then I'm going to be taking them up over the roof and plugging them in uh, to the panel. As long as they reach, which I feel like they're going to, but we'll, we'll find out soon, I guess. First of all, though, we should disconnect the solar from the power station. There we go. Fish this wiring over here. And then, oh my god, there's a big knot. A big knot over there. That looks fun. Ouch, I hit myself in the face. Okay. Come on. Come on, you. Come on, knot. There we go. There we go. We're getting there. Oh, we're getting there. Uh oh. So they come down to almost reach the ground here. I'm just starting to wonder, once I fish it over the edge of the roof, is it going to be long enough to reach the cables on the solar panel? Huh. The one cable goes all the way up over the roof peak, angled. So that'll definitely reach, but then the other cable the control board on this panel is weird. There's one cable way down on this side, and then the other cable is way up at the other, the other end. So one cable might end up being too short to reach. I'm not, I'm not certain yet. We'll see. We'll see. Hey, buddy, came down to visit me while I'm out here working. All right, thank you. Sorry about that light. Uh, the more I'm looking at this, the more I don't think that it's going to reach. We've got the cables to here, and I plan on throwing them up over the roof there, but I think it might reach the one cable, whether it's the positive or negative on the panel, but it's definitely not going to reach the other. Um, I can tell. There's, there's no way. So I'm almost wondering if I would have been best leaving them where I had them going across the roof, but on an angle to reach the panel. I'm going to have to just climb up there and see. The least fun part, climbing up there. I'm going to put sneakers on because it is never a good idea to be up on a roof in Crocs. Ask me how I know. As I expected, that roof was really hot on the hands. 10 out of 10, do not recommend. I'm still pretty sure I'm going to be too short on one cable to reach. Yeah, this one's going to be fine. But this one? Yeah, not too sure. The other super fun thing is going to be taking this cabling and, f and throwing it back across the roof with little to no room to work with up there because I did that before and it was... It was quite a task. You gonna help me with it, Ramsey? Come out here and help me with it. Come out here and help me with this project, okay? You can jump off of there. Are you scared? Come on. You lead the way, Ramsey. Tell me where to start with this project, okay? Definitely doesn't start at my sneakers. Of all the places you could explore, you go under your catio. Okay. All right. I think the wise thing to do here is uh, to fish the connector for this one. This is the longest one. Fish that one through first and alone because if this ends up needing to connect, you know, up there a lot further, then we know this one's not going to reach. But if I can connect to this one, 
and then I can reach with the other one up over the roof, then that still works too. Huh, okay. Doesn't matter how you do it as long as it works. I might have one wire under the roof and one wire over, but I mean, they're still connected. Still same length of wire. <laughs> oh man, that's way over there. I need a gaff or something. Actually, I remember what I did before. I tied rope to the end and then threw this spool over to the other side. That's what I'm gonna do again. Well, that worked out quite well, maybe. This is 100% going to reach, as you can see. But I don't want it hanging in front of my doorway, so I am going to take this cable belonging to the panel, and I'm gonna fish it up through one of the rafters in the roof, just to keep the whole thing up under there. I've got these wasps swooping down at me every once in a while. Um, yeah. They're working hard, building their nest. This just confirmed what I thought. This other wire that belongs toward the other, the top side of the panel, isn't gonna reach this wire. So <laughs> yeah, I'm probably gonna have to go over the roof with the other cable. If it's short by like two or three inches, it, that's gonna suck. All right, this cable. Um. Oh geez, is it going to reach? Oh no. <laughs> well, I'm gonna tie the rope on the other end of this and we're just gonna throw the spool up over the peak of the roof and we'll just have a look-see. My rope didn't quite make it, but I think I can grab that with something. All right, back up on the roof the second time. It's probably even hotter. I had to try. Yeah, you, you gotta try. I mean, that was close. I'm gonna go behind the fridge and see if there's any slack and cabling back there that I can work with. All I need is maybe 12 inches to reach that. See this? This is the solar connections to uh, the the cabling. There's there's some slack here to work with. I'm definitely going to try at the roof vent to pull some more of this up and have a little more to work with. We'll see. In case you didn't know this about me, I am hella stubborn. So if I think there's a chance that I can reach that cable, I'm going to take it. I will be damned if I climb up on that roof for the third time and this sucker doesn't reach. <laughs> But I gotta try it. I gotta try it. You always gotta try. Okay, I went up there and messed with it a little more. See that loop right there? That's a lot of slack. And uh, I'd say that's probably more than a foot of slack. I'm gonna climb back up there. There's gonna be enough slack in that cable to now reach the solar panel. Yes, it's happening. I'm doing it because I'm I'm doing it. Persistence sometimes is key. Yeah.
both cables are plugged in. Now there's only one thing to do. Plug the solar into the uh, power station and let's see what kind of juice we're getting. You guys didn't tell me I had a mosquito on my forehead. 219, 220. Wow, okay. Tell me this was a bad idea. <laughs> this is gonna give me way better juice. For a little while anyway, until winter, because then winter, you know, winter's going to expect a 90 degree solar panel. <laughs> I could always hang that portable panel back up if I really wanted to, but for now, getting this kind of solar coming in um, feels pretty good. See the recharge time on that? Yeah. That's what I like to see. Basically now I'm getting that full solar input um on the power station that it can handle from that 400 watt panel and uh the reason i'm using it for that is because it just wasn't being used i unhooked my batteries over here because i plan on you know getting rid of some of these batteries here wow aggressive much i just watched this spider chase away this spider i don't know if he was coming for his his supper or what but yeah, he was not having it. And he's much bigger than the other one, so obviously you chased him off in a hurry. Nature. It's beautiful, but it can be cruel. If you're wondering why I didn't combine my solar or hook up the 400 water to my charge controller in here, the 330 watt and the 400 watt panel, two different panels, two different voltages, also, I have a 40 amp charge controller and I think I'd need a higher amp charge controller. And yes, I could incorporate a 30 and a 40, but I just, you know, I don't have time for that right now. <laughs> I'm pretty pleased with this. Fridge is still running, 82 watts, 219, 220 watts coming in. Now there's only one thing left to do. Dismantle this tripping hazard, fold it back up, put it in its case put it in the shed so it can once again be used as a portable solar panel like it is meant to be. But first, I just saw some blackberries over here. Oh, I don't get many, but I get some. Are you edible? Ew, it's edible, isn't it? Okay, this one's bug free. Okay, there's some better ones, some better ones back in here. This one. This one, this one back here, yeah. Mm. Nature's candy, baby. That panel did me well. Yeah, I don't think those are meant to be permanent solar solutions. I think they're kind of, they're meant to be portable, you know, use on the go. Well, that project is done. If you're wondering what's going on with the whole diesel heater situation, yeah, it might be in the next video or another video soon. It's a work in progress. I have got another small project to do right now. Um, Last evening I was showering and uh, my heel kind of stepped on the the back of the shower pan where the sidewall kind of curves inward and then the shower pans under that. I kind of stepped right in that corner and I heard a crack. Yeah. I believe my exact words were, Oh no you didn't. But it turns out, Oh yeah, yeah I did. Now you cannot see this crack to the naked eye. But uh, let me just try to show you here. Where are we? Get the light to focus. If I push down, you see that, see that crack right there? Yeah. Yep. Right there. Uh-huh. Before anyone says, You need a new RV! It's getting too old! Do you remember 11 months ago when I replaced my... RV tub with a brand new RV tub. Yeah, that tub is 11 months old. I don't know if my 
if my tub is trying to tell me that I'm consuming too many beers, or that if life just decided, hey Jenna, thought I'd throw another project at you. Here you go. You weren't busy enough. If you're not aware, my old tub, which was probably the original tub from 1994, um, it cracked kind of right in the center, you know, where you stand, basically. And I thought that that's where the crack was leaking. I did fix it with some marine grade silicone, I guess. And I thought that the crack was causing the tub to leak. Turned out it was actually at the drain. Um, the gasket was completely gone in the drain. Because I thought it was the crack, I replaced the tub. Turns out it was just the drain, but I still would have needed to replace the tub anyway because the drain was seized. And the only way to remove the drain was to cut the drain out of the tub. So, yeah, I mean, that part worked out. But I was not planning on this brand new tub cracking on me um, in less than a year. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I just fed you. You were just given snacks and it's not supper time yet. So why are you sitting there like, like, feed me? Huh? How come? How come? I'm gonna run the hair dryer um, down in that corner of the bathtub and get it nice and dry and then I'm gonna use some of this, uh, what is it, advanced silicone 100% waterproof. I'm just gonna like put a little on my finger, on a glove obviously, and uh, seal over that little crack there. If you have other suggestions, let me know, but this is like flexible sealant, so I think it's gonna do an okay job. Here's my concern. Okay, we're underneath the tub and the actual shower pan sits in this little, whatever this is, it's a little lip. Um, anyway, if I seal the crack and it does continue to leak, the water's gonna go into this thing until it's full enough to spill over the sides and go on the floor. <laughs> so I have no way of knowing if the, if the leak is fixed when I seal it until I'm just gonna have to keep checking this, I guess. <laughs> I mean, do you see what I'm saying here? This is, it's interesting. My last shower pan literally just sat on a very thin piece of styrofoam on a platform, a wooden platform. And that one, I did build a platform for that one too. And part of me wonders, did I not put it at the right height, the perfect height, and that's why it cracked or, I mean, I, I don't know. There's no way to really know, I guess. Or maybe it's just there was too much flex in that corner where I happened to, to step. I'm not sure. Either way, it's too late now to dwell. So I'm going to go ahead and take a hair dryer, dry that area really well, and then slap some of that silicone on it. That's all I can do for now. Well, the sealant is on there, so uh, now I just have to leave it set for 12 hours before I can run any water on it. And now I will also just have to be cognizant of the fact that there is a crack there and avoid that area of the shower pan, I guess. Projects for today, done. I am going to go around and clean the outside of the windows because for some reason they are disgusting. I hope you are all doing well, I hope you enjoy this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye. Ramsey? I didn't want to tell them, man, but you're definitely the reason for the dirty windows. You're always out there smacking moths and sky raisins against the window, making yourself a little snack. But, uh, yeah, you're the reason I gotta clean these windows so much, buddy. What do you have to say for yourself? Nothing? No comment? Don't even want to look me in the eye? Don't, don't even want to look me in the eye? Oh, all right. What the heck is this? 
What's that? I just cleaned these not long ago. Is that some type of spider confetti? From whatever's... What is that? Is this because of you? Dude. Oh yeah, scurry away now. Don't worry, I'll clean up your mess. Can you see this? Those are all little spider babies. This is a freaking spider commune here.